In other news now, Chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamara, retired, has commended members of the House of Representatives for rejecting an attempt to push through a bill to decriminalize cannabis cultivation, its sale and use in Nigeria on the floor of the Assembly. Responding to the development earlier today, the NDLEA chairman said the decision by majority of the lawmakers to reject the bill will further strengthen the gains made in the renewed war against drug abuse and trafficking in the country. He said the 2018 drug survey figure of 10.6 million Nigerians abusing cannabis alone is enough to sound the alarm bell. Mr. Marwa said history will never forget those who stand with parents to protect them and their children from any legislation under NFM. The NDLEA Director of Media and Advocacy, Femi Mabafemi, joins me now on the news at 7. It would seem that the NDLEA is quite excited about um, the way and manner the lawmakers have voted in this regard. But is the agency paying attention at all to the, uh, the medical and economic gains that have been highlighted in this regard? Thank you very much uh, for having me on uh, the news hour. One, um, just uh, like the chairman said in the statement um, issued earlier today, uh, it's, um, the development is actually something that came to us at the NDLA at um, a very sharing news, and it's something that um, quite a lot of Nigerians, especially the Nigerian public, and the parents who we daily relate with, who are daily uh, contending with pains of having to see their children uh, lose their dreams, lose um, focus in life and go down because of the consequences of the abuse of this particular psychoactive substance. So for us, uh, we believe that is very key. One, then two, to the question of whether um, we are overlooking the medicinal and the economic benefits of this particular plant. Uh, with this, we have argued over time that in our own situation here, <clears throat> we have a, um, this aquatic substance that as of 2018, the drug survey conducted by the um, National Bureau of Statistics supported by the UNODC showed that 10.6 million Nigerians out of 14.3 million that were captured um, uh, under that survey abused this particular substance. So that shows us that this is the most abused illicit substance in our country today. And between 2018 and now, nobody could tell until we probably conduct another survey before we can actually come to the conclusion whether indeed even the figures had doubled, tripled, or come down. But then what is important is this. We are the ones relating or handling, I mean, directly um, uh, dealing with this issue. So we know uh, the kind of things we are facing. We know the kind of challenges out there. And um, you can't stay because you want to make um, say like $10 million of the sale from the export of this particular um, substance, this particular plant. And you have to back home, spend like $10 billion to build rehab centers, to build um, counseling centers, treatment centers, to attend to uh, those suffering from um, the consequences of um, this substance abuse. So it's for us, it's um, like we're trying to prioritize um, economic gains far and above public health, far and above our national security. We have also established and said this without, um, I mean, with, uh, this, is, this is something that it's well based, evidence-based, that there is a strong nexus between the security challenges the nation um, is contending with and this um, illicit substance. I hear you, Mr. Babafemi. Your position would also yes. mean that you're saying that you do not trust um, a controlled environment where this plantation can be done for economic and medical gains. But this particular bill may not have passed at the House of Reps. I'm sure you are aware that it, there is an active conversation in another state assembly uh, where they seem to enjoy the support of um, the executive governor. Is that something that worries the agency and is there an ongoing lobby to ensure that it doesn't also pass? Well, what we know surely is that um, that bill 
cannot stand anywhere in any part of the country. We have to uh, be realistic. We have to face the fact. We have to face the reality of our situation as it is. I know um, there is probably, I mean, definitely like you uh, referred to, a particular state where they are well disposed. But I can also tell you that I've also, um, we have also followed development of, in recent times in that state that um, the government there has actually been doing quite a lot to support um, the fight against um, illicit substance abuse, especially our war against uh, drug abuse. That is water advocacy activities. They have been very supportive. So for us, it would um, be counterproductive or it's like going uh, one step forward and taking another Ten steps backward. We can't be um, taking the advocacy to schools, to health institutions, to government agencies, and at the same time, the same government that is also supporting that, even um, uh, leading the advocacy with the state officials, would, on the other hand, go back to say, we want to legalize or we want to decriminalize this. That um, will be counterproductive. That we can assure you, and it's not going to work. We we continue st we continue to stay on this and we continue to uh, make our position known in any part of the country where this comes up. Director of Maiden Advocacy and DLA, Femi Mabafemi, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Good evening.